How's it going, people? I've been better, but I'm hanging in there. Little, little gin and uh, vermouth might help me out some. Just went to the uh, Memorial Day uh, Music Festival. They used to call it the Jazz Festival. Now, now it's just music. Um, it's a great time to pick up uh, literature all over the place. <laughs> they got all kinds of pushers out there. Oh, let's see. I haven't decided which one I want to read. I think the one about death looks good. I haven't read these in advance. I like to be surprised. There's not much surprising about the, the content, but it helps if I don't look ahead. It's been a tough week. <sighs> a little extra dry vermouth. Go with that extra dry gin. All right. Shaken, not stirred. Nice and cold. Mm, pure delight. And we're not done yet. A <sighs> couple of olives uh, marinated in dry mouth. Dry vermouth. All right, let's uh, let's read about death. Okay, it happens every day. <laughs> These guys kill me. <laughs> oh, and it's the Fellowship Track League. And I like these guys, although the prints are really small and tight. I like their brains. What if you died today? Even while reading this tract, you could be having a slight pain in your chest or head. Maybe some numbness in the fingertips while you're at it. <laughs> uh, within a few hours, you could be dead of a heart attack or brain hemorrhage. Or maybe a jet air airplane engine might come loose and crash through the roof of my apartment. You know, it happened in Donnie Darko. I mean, <clears throat> okay, you could die. That's what they want to tell us. All right, and be afraid. That's a scary thing. Death is intellectible. However, the Bible states, whosoever, uh, wait, Bible states, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, or what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. And that's James 4, 14. So basically, we're a fart in the wind. Thank you. <sighs> yeah, so get brainwashed right now. Before you die, pull that parachute cord there. Hey, even if you are in excellent health, you could be killed in an auto mode, an auto accident today. God, these guys are scaring me. Do you remember the shock you uh, felt the last time you heard someone you knew was killed in an accident? They certainly never thought that death would come so suddenly to them. Perhaps these will be the last words you ever read. They're trying real hard to scare me. Ah. Mm. But I'm just too mellow right now. All right. Um, you cannot escape death. Ooh. And... 
as is edited, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Not that they're judging anybody. Um, Hebrews 9, 27. Maybe you're thinking, if I would die today, I'm ready to go. After all, I've never done anything really bad. I don't believe that a merciful God would send me to hell. <sighs> the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's Romans 3.23. So you're wrong. You're as bad as a serial killer or a child molester or a, or a Wall Street banker. <clears throat> For the wages of sin is death. And um, that's Hebrews 6. 23a, so that's only part of it. <laughs> um, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Revelations 21.8. The fearful, huh? Hmm. Are there more traits? In, I mean, do you have to be all these things or just one of those things? Just wondering. Um, according to God's word, <coughs> it does not matter how good you are. You deserve to burn in a lake of fire forever and ever. These are sweet guys, aren't they? A wonderful bunch of people. However, there is good news. God provides a way of escape, a parachute, <laughs> a Ray Comfort parachute. Hmm. Sorry, I think I need to make another one. Hmm. I'm not going to measure this one. We're almost out of gin anyway. Well, not really. <laughs> this bottle, this soldier's just about expired. Uh, but I will measure out the vermouth. Close enough. And these olives will do me just fine. Uh. Uh. Okay, Farrell laughs here, isn't this? All right. <clears throat> However, there is good news. God provides a way of escape because he has given you a savior, your parachute. Um, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that's uh, Romans 6, 23b. So, we got to finish that one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting uh, lasting life. And that's Austin 3, I mean, John 3.16, excuse me. Uh, please stop for a moment and read that last verse once again. Let's just not and say we did. I've heard it plenty of times. <sighs> How does the Bible say that you can have everlasting life? Well, um, you just have to believe in scapegoatism and blood atonement. Someone else can pay for your crimes. Put it on his tab. <sighs> it does not say that you can have everlasting life by trusting in some church or saint. Okay. <sighs> Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And that's Acts 4.12. We're just jumping all over the place here. Uh, the Bible does not say, by grace ye are saved through faith, 
wait, wait, wait. Um, the Bible does not say you can have everlasting life by doing good works. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You mean like Christians that are always going, you know, as a Christian, I have to vote this way. You know, and hey, that guy couldn't be a child molester. He's a Christian. I used to hear shit like that growing up. You know, nowadays we can pretty much buy into the fact that now we just say that they're not true Scotsmen. He I mean, said he was a Christian, but he wasn't a real one. He was a counterfeit one. It's the latest way of explaining that away. Anyway, that was Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Um, you can only get everlasting life by completely trusting Jesus. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life after they're dead. I guess. Um, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So look out. And it's John 3, 36. Why don't you admit to God that you are a hillbound sinner? And there's no question mark on that one. Huh. But, it's a, but it was phrased like a question. All right. Um. Admit to him that you are willing to turn from your sinful life and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior while there's still time. You know, the crapture could happen any second now. Or you, might, you might feel a numbness in your fingertips, and a little pain in your arm, maybe hemorrhage or something. Or your appendix might just explode all of a sudden and you don't have time to get to a hospital. Or you might get snake bit. Something like that. Uh, so, get some insurance. Fire insurance. All right. Afterlife insurance. All right. I'm uh, sorry. Um, God's Word says that you can know for sure that you have everlasting life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life after you die. Um, and nobody's ever come back and complained that they didn't, so it must be true. And oh, that was 1 John 5.13. Um, this is not just a coincidence that you are reading this tract. It's part of the plan. <laughs> I picked this off the ground. It was like it was crying out to me, like those you know, seeds thrown in rocky places. You know, I might be saving souls right now, doing the Lord's work. All right. God planned for you to read it, and not someone else. But anyone could. But it was part of the plan. God planned for you to read it and not someone else. This could be your last warning. All right. You mean I want to hear about this shit anymore? Wouldn't that be awesome? Um, will you reject Jesus? Can I reject Apollo and Thor while I'm at it? And Krishna? You know. I'm tired of the whole lot. All right. The Bible said, uh, the Bible states, uh, he that believeth not is condemned already. So, let's shut up about it already, huh? But you just can't get away from it. It's everywhere. Shove right down your throat. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son, and that's John 3, 18b. So that's the latter half of that verse. Will you accept Jesus as your personal Savior? Remember, salvation does not depend on feelings or on an emotional experience, so really, or intellect for that matter. It is based on what God has promised in his word. So all those people that have faith in other shit, they're wasting their time, but you won't be, because you're believing in the right shit. 
just, you know, lucky geographically speaking. All right. Um, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. Call on God today. Operators are waiting up there or somewhere. Since, you know, we're on a globe and up is down in space and down is up and whatever. There is no up or down in space. Just here on the planet. All right. Um, call on God today. Don't put it off another minute because you could have a fucking heart attack or a nimbleism or something. And then it'll be too late once you're dead. Yeah, no... No after death, you know, your, your astral body comes out and goes, oh shit, is it too late? Yes, it's too late. Should have done it back when you were alive and gullible. All right. Um, please pray this prayer or one similar to it. They're offering us a sample prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I know I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus died for my sin, or maybe sins, you know, unless that's one of those words that's plural automatically, but I don't think it is. Um, I am willing to turn from sin. I now ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart and life as my personal Savior. But I'm willing to share them with other people because, you know, we have an open relationship. <laughs> well, sort of. I mean, it's open-ended on his side. I, he's not sharing me with nobody, though. <laughs> I just have to share him with everybody. That's love. All right. Um, I am willing, by God's grace, to follow and obey as the Lord of my heart and life and listen to his earthly representatives and give them my money. All right, if you have decided to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior after reading this track, please write and let us know, and then you fill that shit out, which I'll put in the comment box. But anyway, death, it happens every day, every minute, every second. So, be afraid. Be afraid and believe. And I hope I've helped some of you, you know, changed your life, saved your souls, or enlightened you in some way. Or at least showed you how to make a decent martini. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having, because I'm trying my best to also.